are following breaking business news. Japan's largest steel maker, Nippon Steel, is set to purchase U.S. steel for $14 billion. The deal will put the 122-year-old American company in the hands of a foreign firm. U.S. Steel will retain its name after the acquisition and remain in Pittsburgh, where it was founded in 1901 by J.P. Morgan, Andrew Carnegie, and Charles Schwab. The United Steelworkers Union, which represents many of the company's workers, is condemning this acquisition. Joining us with the latest deals on this mega merger is senior correspondent John Huddy. John, wish I was still with you in Florida, but great to have you with us today. Tell well, us was, more. Yeah, it was great when you were here, Jen. It was good to see you. <laughs> uh, th this is a, a major deal, um, and it's facing major opposition from not only U.S. elected officials, but also, uh, as you were talking about, the United Steelworkers Union, uh, which my dad's family actually were members of, uh, which has vowed to only support the proposed purchase offer from Cleveland Cliffs, which was a much less uh, lower offer. Uh, Cleveland Cliffs is another unionized American steel company, a big company uh, here in the United States. But U.S. Steel, of course, is one of the biggest. And now, under this deal, Nippon Steel will become one of the world's largest steel manufacturers. As of now, uh, the 122-year-old U.S. Steel has agreed to be sold to Nippon Steel, Japan's largest steel maker, as part of this $14 billion agreement. And under the terms of it, U.S. Steel's operations and headquarters will retain the same name and it will remain in Pittsburgh. U.S. Steel wrote in a press release that its commitments with its employees and collective bargaining agreements with the unions will remain in place and will be honored. Further, that the deal will, quote, enhance its world-leading manufacturing and technology capabilities and enable it to expand the geographic areas in which NSC can better serve all of its stakeholders, including customers and society at large, end quote. And that includes, according to uh, the companies, strengthening the ability to address growing demand for high-grade steel and driving the steel industry towards decarbonization. That said, not everyone is convinced. Senator John Fetterman said he will do his best to try to block the sale. Listen. I'm standing on the roof of my home right here in Braddock, Pennsylvania, right across the street from the Edgar Thompson plant. And I just have to say it's absolutely outrageous that they have sold themselves to a foreign nation and a company. Can't do that. Steel is always about security as well, too. And I am committed to doing anything I can do from using my platform or my position in order to block this. And I'm going to fight for the steel workers and their union way of life here as well, too. And we cannot ever allow them to be screwed over or left behind. And David McCall, the president of the uh, United Steel Workers Union, called the deal greedy and a violation of the union agreement. And upon steel, though, said that the higher demand for steel under the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act was one of the big contributing factors in the deal. U.S. Steel, by the way, reports uh, that it has 11,417 jobs in Pennsylvania and generated $3.6 billion for the state and local economy last year. And when news of this broke, uh, the shares of U.S. Steel did go up at this point. But it's, you know, expect a lot of pushback on this and a lot more news coming out of it. Jen, back to you. And